Let's be radically honest. There's a reason why you decided to become the professional or entrepreneur that you are today. Is it safe to say that it wasn't to be away from those you love or sacrifice yourself and your health while doing it? What if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working harder? What if stress and overwhelm were a thing of your past? Entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of comparison and imposter syndrome so that you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. I am Ranchelle and I'm your host. Today's show is about failure is not an F word. You know, every time I say an F word in my home with my mom, I have to give her 20 bucks. So failure is not the F word. Uh, before we start the show, I want to share a little story with you. You know, I have found that a lot of successful entrepreneurs struggle. And they're struggling with how to increase their revenue without having to work harder or sacrifice more time away from their family. And maybe you could relate to that. Um, really what we want, of course, when we get into business is we want more time and more money, the freedom, right, to do the things that we want to do when we want to do it. Then we get into being an entrepreneur and we find that that's not the truth. That's not really our first experience, is it? For me, certainly, I thought the problem was I needed another new strategy, and perhaps maybe you can relate to that. So um, there is an investment of time and money into a promise that a process and system is all that they need. Now, don't get me wrong, process and system is really important, but the real problem is that a solution for more revenue and to have more time doing what you love cannot be uncovered with the same mindset that created the situation in the first place. So what's required is a new approach to how to think about your life, your business, and your problems. And this was my story and why I decided to become an entrepreneurial success coach and why I'm here with you. Because I help entrepreneurs uncover how to double their income by discovering the keys to unpacking the limiting beliefs that are holding you back. Now, this can be things like, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I'm too old. I'm not smart enough. Or in this particular case, failure is bad. So if you resonate with my story, I encourage you to connect with me at rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Again, rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Email me and put in the subject line free resources. And let's talk about in this particular instance, failure. So listen, I really want to dig in because failure is not an F word. Now, some of the programming that people have faced is that failure is bad. And I know for me, that was actually something that I really, really struggled with. If you have this limiting belief that failure is bad, your actions are going to be about avoiding failure or loss and not creating success, right? So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have the need to be right or do you have the need to not be wrong? So here, I gotta tell you something. There's a difference. And I get that that's not the best, the best language. I understand that. On purpose, I'm asking you it this way. Do you have the need to be right or the need to not be wrong? I'm gonna share a story with you, or an example, I guess, more than a story. So let's say the sky is really, really blue. In fact, in Alberta today, it's fairly, it's blue. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's evident to you that it's blue and you're in conversation with someone and they say something like, I can't believe how cloudy it is today. Will you feel the need to correct them? If you're in conversation with someone that you love and they say something that you know is wrong, do you feel the need to correct them? Or would you just let that pass? Now, let me put this on the uh, shoe on the other foot. What if someone corrects you? What if uh, someone you're doing, whether it's Facebook, in proper use of language, or no, that's not the truth, or no, that's not the facts, or no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong, Ranchal. What if you make a mistake? Do you admit it right away, or do you try to uh, avoid admitting it? For me personally, it's I avoid um, being wrong. I can't be wrong. And it's been really interesting because when I partner up with someone who needs to be right, and I can't be wrong, it, sparks can sometimes fly. Now, why am I bringing this into a conversation about uh, failure isn't an F word? Because whether you need to be right or you don't want to be wrong, this will show up when you're facing failure. Now, 
Um, I, you know, I love uh, coming on when I come on because Bruce is be, uh, before me. <clears throat> if you haven't heard Bruce and Inspire Choices Network, I, I, I encourage you, I urge you to go and listen to him. So today he was talking about the definitions um, of something. And I laugh because I have today, I wanted to share with you, there's so much confusion about failure. And I think one of the reasons why is the definition of failure. So here is the definition. According to the dictionary, I think it was the Webster's Dictionary is on today. The definition of failure, it's a noun, and there's many. But as a noun, it's lack of success. Well, no wonder we get our panties tied in a knot when we talk about failure. It means, in the dictionary, a lack of success, right? And this can be confusing because when you look at quotes about failure, Google it, right? Wait till the show's after. Listen to what I'm saying, but Google it afterwards and put quotes on failure. It says something like failure is just part of a success or there's no such thing as a failure or I found 10,000 ways not to create a light bulb and one that was successful. I think it was Edison uh, that said that, you know, so what is it? No wonder we're so confused. No wonder this is so painful for so many of us. No wonder we avoid failure because we have this dictionary definition and then we have this ways and means, you know, in the internet's awesome, you know, but we have these quotes. So where do you stand? How do you actually feel about a failure? Here's what I know for sure. Our brains are um, a consequence of overwhelm and confusion. Pardon me, a consequence of, of confusion is overwhelm. And the consequence of confusion creates procrastination or self-sabotage. So really, if you're experiencing this confusion around failure, how can you move forward? How can you create the steps to success? So where do we start? Well, we know that clarity changes the brain. So um, if you've listened to me before, either here on Inspired Choices Network, or you've been on, on uh, you know, Apple, you've been on Google, you've been on iHeartRadio, wherever you've been, or you've seen me speak, you will know that I talk a lot about the brain and that clarity is so important. In fact, one of the first episodes that I did here was talking about redefining success, being clear about what success means, success means for you. I'm gonna say that slower. Success means for you. I could have a Freudian slip there. What success means for you. Be clear. So if you wanna know more about that, I encourage you to go to the first episode. You know, how do you define success? For today, let's assume you have clarity on what success means. Let's start with that. So I want you to know something about your brain. When you move into something new, your brain is going to have the same, um, believe the same way. Hmm, let me rephrase that because I want to, it's important that I'm clear. When you move into something new, your brain will behave the same way it has in its past. Your brain is a goal achieving machine. So when you move into something unknown, your brain is going to start to look for the known. I'll say that again. When you move into something unknown, your brain is going to start to look for something known. And when you do that, it's going to go into your past and start finding different ways like, oh, yes, she's done this before. But what if you're trying something new? What happens to your brain then? It starts to look for something it can relate to, and it starts to line up for you to understand what that means for you, what success could mean for you, what failure might mean for you. So when you don't know, when you don't know what's going on, your brain is actually wired for survival. So rather than going, oh, here's all the ways that she could possibly create success. Now you can wire your brain that way. You can wire your brain that way. Most of us Right? I said your brain isn't, isn't wired naturally that way. So it's, it's, um, it's something that you can adapt, something you can adopt. So your brain goes into and starts looking in your past. If there's nothing it can relate to, you start to avoid failure. Because a lot of us have a fear of failure. Now, a lot of people, and depending on who you talk to, it's about a 50-50, have a fear of success. And that is a whole other episode because we're going to stick with failure. 
So if you're trying to avoid failure and you're doing everything you can to avoid failure and you go to try something new, what do you think is going to happen? Unless you have defined and are clear that you're moving towards success, right? And you practice that. That's a practice. You can practice that. You could embody that. Your brain will start to go into avoidance, into procrastination, into self-sabotage. It will start bringing up things of, do you remember when you were in third grade and you tried to play ball and it didn't work and everyone laughed at you? Now, you might not consciously go there, but I can tell you in an unconscious, subconscious way, your brain is going there. And we ask, well, why am I procrastinating? Well, your brain's a goal-achieving machine, so guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to happen? Your brain is going to tell you why. <laughs> and more than likely, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, your brain's going to tell you why. And more than likely, it's not going to be because you rock, Ranchelle. No. <laughs> It's going to go because you suck. Right? That's what happens. And so we start looking at all of these. We look at all of our past situations where we might have stumbled and fallen, that we might have failed. Again, no wonder we avoid failure at all costs, right? So when I'm talking about failure isn't an F word. It's not something bad. It's not. However, you might have many, many experiences that it is bad. And I'm going to share with you today uh, a few key pieces on how to rewire your brain so that when you look at failure, you're looking at it through a new lens. We're going to reframe what failure means. So I think to start, one of the things I want to share with you is everything that you want in your future, it doesn't exist. So I'm going to just take a moment. I'm going to slow down. I'm so excited. I know I'm talking fast. Everything you want doesn't exist. It's in the future. And the future can be scary. The future is an unknown. And if your brain is avoiding the unknown, which it is, your brain will do things to lead you astray. Right? So the one key component here is to ask yourself, in your actions that you're taking, can you switch it? Or have you noticed, let me, let me rephrase it. In your actions that you're taking, just take three things that have happened in the last three days. And can you see if you're avoiding failure or loss? Can you see if you're avoiding something? Are you in resistance of something? Or have you trained your brain to move towards success. So, and it's easy, you can think, what am I resisting? There's this thing happening. What am I resisting? Being, doing, or having, right? Or how is this action that I've taken propelling me forward, moving me forward? Those are two really, really important questions, right? So I'm gonna kind of recap your brain automatically comes in wired to avoid failure, right? Your brain is looking for safety and security and the unknown does not feel very safe and secure for your brain. So it starts to behave in a way, starts to lead you down this path of avoidance, procrastination, self-sabotage. Now, the greatest thing is, is that your brain is, well, it's, let's say it's simple. It's complex and simple at the same time. To rewire your brain, one of the things you want to start doing is asking different questions. So I had said earlier, clarity is essential. Clarity is essential. Clarity changes your brain. When you have clarity, you'll find that there's no more overwhelm. When you have clarity, you'll find that you're no longer procrastinating and you're no longer moving into self-sabotage. Right. Which is, which is, which is key. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a little bit of a tickle today. I am winning against uh, a cough. I'm winning against a cough. Right. All right. So I am really excited to be sharing after the commercial break. I'm going to share a little bit more about with if uh, everything you want doesn't exist 
It's in the future. How can you wire your brain in a way where it starts to relax into the future? So you are listening to Ignite Your Success with Renshaw on the Inspired Choices Network. And when we return, we will continue to, to discuss failure is not an effort. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchell Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Again, I'm Ranchell Van Bryce on Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. And today the to show topic is failure is not an F word. Now, before I went to break, I shared with you that clarity changes the brain and that we're wired to avoid failure, right? And so we really are in this space where we need to create a different way of looking at things. My favorite quote uh, by Wayne Dyer, and it's actually uh, in my introduction, is when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So if we're looking at failure and we want a different outcome, we, we want to avoid <laughs> we want to avoid avoiding failure. Oh my goodness. My English teachers would be like, Ranchel, don't do that. <laughs> it's really, what we want to do is we want to move you from avoiding failure to creating success. So let's reframe failure. We're going to spend a little bit of time here today together. So what if we looked at failure as simply, we took action on something, we had an expected outcome, and we didn't get that result. So we took action, we had an expected outcome, and we didn't get that result. What if we removed the meaning of failure and changed it, or removed it, period, or changed it? What if we had a different meaning completely, right? It's difficult to have no meaning to something, right? It is difficult, although I talk lots about one of the greatest keys to success is to move into and accept the isness of your experience and have no judgment, right? So one way you can absolutely reframe failure or anything else is to move into the isness of the situation and have no judgment. You can discern, but not judge. And there's a completely different energy between discernment and judgment. So that first shift, the first reframe is what if failure was simply we took action, we had an expect, expected outcome that we didn't get. The other reframe is what if you didn't need to be right? What if you removed that? What if you didn't need to be right or not be wrong? Now, if you don't know which one you are and you're one or the other, Sometimes you can be a combination of both, you're one or the other. But if you don't know, I encourage you to tomorrow or even the rest of today to spend 24 hours being in conversation with people 
and observing whether or not you feel the need to correct somebody in what they're saying, or if you can just move into acceptance. So what does that mean? That means if someone said to you, oh my goodness, I don't like the uh, sky when it's purple. And you did not do anything about correcting, right? Or even asking questions. What do you mean the sky is purple? Unless you truly are coming from a place of understanding. I'll add that caveat, but most of us aren't. Most, most of us, right, are, are wanting to uh, ask questions so we can share. That might be an opinion or a belief. So spend the next 24 hours do you, uh, asking, do I need to be right or do I need to not be wrong? What happens when someone tells you that you're wrong, right? The first time I did this, my partner, Rob, said, well, no, you're wrong, Ranchelle. I felt every hair in the back of my neck stand up. And I was like, oh, there we go. Boom, boom. Ranchelle does not like to be wrong. I have a difficult time admitting when I make a mistake, right? I'm better now. I'm better now. I still show up that way. So I have to work. I work diligently towards not um, work diligently towards admitting when I make a mistake. Right. So we're looking at failure differently. If you're just joining now, right. We're looking at failure differently. We're looking at what if I didn't need to be right or wrong. And you know what? The, often when I'm sharing with my clients, we talk about this we talk about failure because I mean, it is, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a sticky subject. It's a, mm, it's a hot topic. Right. And a lot of people are like, Oh, I have no problem at all. You know, failing, it's just no big deal until they get into it. And they see that that's not true. But the story that I like to use and I make light of it is what if when we were kids and we first started to learn how to walk and we were crawling you know how babies stand up and they kind of like they're holding on to a couch or your pant leg and then they walk and they fall. What if when we, that happened, we did that, we just said like, screw it. This walking thing's too hard. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't know how to learn how to walk. I can't do this. I'm too old. I'm too young, right? I'm not able to do this. We just gave up. But the, thank goodness we didn't, or we'd still be crawling, right? So when we look at failure, we can look at examples of when failure is can be reframed in a simple way. Now, why do we do that? Because when it gets to like the really, really hot topics, we can look at different um, outcomes that we really felt failure was going on, that we really felt was holding us back from doing the thing that we wanted to do. We really feel like failing failures have held us back from goals, from especially from big, hairy, audacious goals, because we have this fear of making a mistake. We have this fear of failing. Oh, by the way, the fear of making a mistake is just is another way of saying a fear of failure, right? It's just another way of saying. So if what if we moved into and let go of these definitions that we have of failure? What if we let go of the meaning of failure, right? And I really want you to think about if you look at your past and you've looked at some of the ways that you might have failed, what was the story you were telling yourself? Did you go into blame of something else or someone else? Well, it was their fault, right? I, I failed at that job because that person did this, excuse me. <clears throat> Did you go into shame and guilt, right? Did you, did you blame yourself? Did you pull back? Did you run away? Did you self-sabotage? Did you procrastinate? What were your actions around failure? Or did you just kind of dig in and do what was necessary and did the thing regardless of the outcome? Were you brave? Were you courageous? And how often are you brave and courageous when you're facing what could be a mistake or a failure, right? I think one of the keys that I, um, when I talk about success is radical honesty and radical awareness is so very important. We have, I mean, depending on your age, of course, too, right? So I'm 53 years old. I'm, I'm happy to tell. I'm 53. So I have 53 years of experience of success and failure. I have 53 years of programming, right? That I need to overcome. 
that I need to bust through. And every time I work through a belief, I get to this place and I think, yes, and I think I got it. And I do, that belief pops up again, that limiting belief. And it can be anything. It can be, I'm not smart enough. I mean, it can be, I don't have value. I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. And I'm certainly these limiting beliefs don't just belong to me. I know that people in my audience feel this way as well, right? This, um, this sense of imposter syndrome. I talk about that a lot as well. So when we think about failure and we think about all of the different episodes um, that we've had where we tried something, all these different outcomes, we've tried something, right? And what's come out of it is not the outcome that we expected. Let's do a reframe. And I'm going to talk about at the end, towards the end of the show, the blessings of failure to really solidify the reframe for you. So one of the things um, with failure, and I think uh, is so important for the reflection, is when you're failing, I'm going to talk a little bit more about blame. I'm going to, I'm going to dig into this. When you're failing at something, do you move into a place where, and I call it my victim energy, right? So I can be in a state of victim. Uh, victory, or I can be in a, in a victim mentality. And when I'm blaming others for something, I'm in my victim, I'm wearing the cloak of victimhood. And I start to feel like everything's happening to me, and that things aren't happening for me. I start to take failure personal. I start to think that I can't do the thing. And I forget that there's so many times that I've tried something and had to do it over and over and over and over again. Perhaps maybe as a listener, you've played sports. Um, Perhaps maybe as a listener, you have either played basketball yourself or have watched someone play basketball. And they're doing a layup. Have you ever done a layup, right? Where you're bouncing the ball and you go to shoot the basket. Well, if you've ever talked to somebody in basketball, my kids both played competitive basketball. I mean, there are more failures <laughs> in shooting uh, uh, the basket, right? The basketball into the net than there are successes. And what if, right? The first time that a layup didn't happen we threw our hands up in the air and said, not, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. I don't want to do this. It's too embarrassing for me. I'm not good at this. And I'm sure that some of you have had that experience when you were children where you tried something and someone laughed at you. I mean, I know that I did. I didn't play sports. I made the decision when I was little that I wasn't good at sports because someone laughed at me when I was trying to play sports. But rather than having um, this, the concept, the idea, um, my parents didn't. At that time, our parents didn't do that, where they sat you down and said, you know what, uh, failure is not an F word, right? You can do this. You're awesome. You're like, I didn't have that kind of cheerleading um, for my parents, not blaming my parents. I'm sharing a story with you. And so, of course, we look at failure in the sense of I didn't have success right away. And I'm not willing necessarily or don't know how to put the work in or I think that I'm supposed to be successful right away, which was mine. I grew up, I have no idea how it happened, but I grew up with this idea that I was supposed to be successful at something immediately. And perhaps maybe you have also had that experience where you thought you had to hit the ball out of the park the first time around, and you gave yourself that particular meaning. All right, let's go to commercial. You're listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchel on Inspired Choices Network. And after our break, I'm going to continue talking about failure is not an effort. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it, Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? 
Tuning in to ignite your success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. You know, I just love this music, and I and I love to dance anyhow, in case you could not tell if you're uh, watching me on TV. And I do. I love movement, and uh, uh, I absolutely would love it if you would connect with me. Uh, rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. I promise I won't bite. Uh, let's have a conversation because I am all about connection. So today we're talking about how failure is not an effort. Failure is not an effort. And so before we went to break, I talked about simply um, reframing what failure could mean. So again, what if we simply took failure and we knew that we were taking action on something? We had a desired outcome. We had this expectation and it didn't, we didn't get it. And that simply was that. It had, it had meant no other meaning other than I tried something and it didn't work. Rather than moving into judgment of ourselves, we just kind of let it go. We became non-attached to the outcome. We moved into the isness of the situation. What would your life look like if you had no fear of trying something new? And it didn't matter whether you were successful or not. And we took that attitude that kids have, you know, that no. Right. The worst thing that can happen is I can't do it. Ah. You know, the worst thing is I'm going to apply for that job and I don't get it. Ah. The worst thing is I'm going to do that layup and I'm going to, you know, it's not going to work. Ah. The worst thing is I'm going to try the high jump and, um, you know, and, and the bar is going to fall over. Oh, the worst thing is, I mean, my kids did it all the time. It was like no big deal. They are always trying something new. And it was exciting for them somewhere. Well, somewhere along the line. And I certainly, you know, uh, it has to do with our experiences. We, we start to shift the way we look at trying something new into, I need to try this new thing and it needs to be successful right out of the gate, right? And it's, it, it's that attitude, it's that behavior, it's that thought, it's those beliefs that we have that really hold us back. We know that our brain is looking for clarity. And we also know that when we're trying something new, there is this unknown and there is this innate concern, um, innate fear of the, of the unknown. Now, you know, and I, I'm going to clarify that actually. I think this is important. We're actually only born with two fears, right? The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. And so I use the word innate and that's not the truth. So I just, I just want to clarify that from a brain science perspective, right? I think, um, I think it's important that I do that. We develop this fear. We develop a fear of success. We develop a fear of failure, right? All other fears we start to develop um, and they are programmed into us from our, uh, our parents and their programming comes from their parents and their programming comes from their parents. So we have a lineage, right? Of this avoidance of, of failure. So when we change the way that we look at failure, one of the things that we can do is to look at the blessings of failure. Um, and this is, I think, an important exercise, right? So for those of you who can take out a pen and paper, if you're driving, don't wait, wait till you get to your destination. But I want you to reframe failure. 
<clears throat> I would like you to look at the blessings of failure. Excuse me. <clears throat> you can take any one of the any one of your failures, and I air quote because truly, there is no such thing as failure. But so air quoting failure. What did you learn from that experience? So what did you learn from that experience? And what's really important is that you take ownership of the experience, right? So what, how did you participate in that? What led to what you would perceive as the failure? Why do you think it's a failure? How did you fail? So what did you learn? And those other questions will help you kind of discern what did you learn? The next blessing right, is um, after you experience this so-called failure, did you have a new or a redirection in your life? So did this experience of failure lead you to another path? Let me give you an example of that in my, in my lifetime. So, um, when I was uh, pregnant with my daughter, I was working in Saskatchewan at the time and I was working for a government agency and it was to support entrepreneurs. And um, I was in my first three, four months, I think, yeah, first uh, three, three months, pardon me, of my pregnancy. So my first trimester with Mackenzie. And um, I remember saying to the marketing director that I was really excited to be there and I really wanted her job. Now, I didn't mean I wanted her to get fired, but I loved everything to do with marketing. And I was learning so much um, about marketing. And my, I grew up in, a, in the hospitality industry. My mom and dad own a hotel in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. So I've, like entrepreneurship has been in my blood. So I remember thinking about all the ways, like all the things I was learning and how many small business owners or, or people like my mom and dad and, and their friends, because most of their friends were entrepreneurs, how I could go back and help them, how I could share this information. So what I meant was I want her job wasn't meant that I wanted her job, but I really felt that she would succeed and she would move up in the, in the rankings. And I was like, hey, I want your job. And um, in that process, I uh, overstepped some boundaries. And because as my first three months, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it was my first three months of uh, being employed. And I found myself suddenly unemployed. I was laid off my first three months. Now, um, I gave it no meaning, even at that time before I was doing this work, other than I should be careful of the words that I use. I'm kind of bold, right? Uh, and and I've, I've been bold for a long time. And so it was a great lesson. It was a great opportunity of learning for me. And so I found myself looking for a job and I, I, I pondered just taking the rest of my pregnancy and um, not working. And I really couldn't imagine not working. And so I found an advertising agent. I actually found a newspaper. I was living in uh, Battleford, Saskatchewan. And I found a newspaper and they hired me knowing that I was pregnant, right? Um, they were looking for someone to kind of fill in. And so the redirection in this life. Now, when I say that it, like it, I gave no meaning to it. I mean, I was, I was hurt. So let me, I wasn't like, oh, no big deal. I got laid off. No, I was like, what? What do you mean? Right? Um, but I didn't like, go over the deep end. I didn't like look at it necessarily as a failure per se at the time, but I looked at it as this, at that time, even this opportunity of there must be something else out there for me. So I move into uh, advertising and I learn a whole bunch of incredible information about advertising. So now I have this marketing that I learned in three months, and I have this uh, six months of advertising that I learned. And when I look back at that experience, 
It was the sales involved in it and the marketing and the advertising that propelled me forward in success, not only in my Curves franchise days, but also when I opened up my sales and marketing agency, right? Now, many people could have looked at that and, and looked at it from a failure perspective. I mean, I was, I was laid off. That's a polite way of saying I was fired within my first three months. I mean, okay, let's be clear, right? And it didn't matter why, like from a story perspective, it doesn't matter why. But we can take a look at something like that. Where in your life have you had an experience? Now, whether it, whether it was, um, had any like sting to it, right, to the experience, <clears throat> or whether it was like this thing happened, I failed at it, right? I failed, I got fired. That, that's, that's failure, <laughs> right? I'm moving into this new place, right? It was seriously a redirection. And when I look at that one thing, I can see how that really led to, you can hear my voice getting scratchy, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and you can see how that really led to this amazing skill set that I have now in sales and uh, marketing and advertising, right? I had an advertising agency for years. And I, I, when I started, before I started business coaching, I was a business consultant focusing on sales and marketing with a component of advertising, right? That wouldn't have happened had I not had this experience, right? Had I not had this experience of, of um, being fired. So, the third way, the third blessing of failure is an opportunity to review your beliefs. <clears throat> Are they serving you? Are your beliefs serving you or are they holding you back? Now, this is really important because if you've ever um, experienced a failure and it's that thing that's holding you back, from trying it again, right? It'll be some sort of limiting belief behind it. It'll be some story that you're telling yourself that you can't do it, right? Because of this past experience that you've had, right? So the radical honesty is so important. Are they serving you? The next blessing I wanna talk about is has this failure set you up for something else? Now, in the first story that I shared with you, it was both a redirection and setting me up. But I'm going to share another story with you. So in um, 2018, I was working for my mentor and coach, and I was one of his coaches, and I was on the sales team. My responsibility was to, to uh, have conversation with people and then make a recommended program, uh, recommend a program for them. And I loved it. Uh, I was um, subcontracted, so I was still my own boss. I still had some of my own clients. And I was in, from the States, so I got to travel right back and forth. And I really felt that if I was going to have a, a, a job, and I looked at it like a, a, as a job, I was subcontracted, but it was a job. I was working for another company. This to me was, was the best. And in the process of being coached, because this is one of the greatest things is I got to be coached every day, I discovered, maybe I'll say uncovered, that I had this avoidance of commitment. When I uncovered that I had this avoidance of commitment, I could see that this limiting belief, so it kind of ties into, right, are my limiting beliefs serving me or not? This limiting belief um, was not serving me. And I decided to make a commitment that I would move forward and I was going to look at everything that I was doing and ask, am I looking at through this lens of, am I a hundred percent committed or do I have one foot in front of the other, right? Or I'm one foot on one side, pardon me, and one foot on the other side, not in front of the other, right? Am I straddling, right? Am I straddling? And what I realized in this assessment, in being radically honest with myself, that I was neither 100% committed to my own business, and I was not committed, 100% committed to my mentor's business. 
because I still had clients. I was still taking in clients. And it wasn't that I wasn't allowed to, that wasn't part of it. But for me, it was my backup plan. How many times have you done something, you've committed and you have a backup plan, right? You don't burn the bridges. When I used to hear that, you need to burn the bridge around. So I'll be like, are you, are you kidding me? That's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why the hell would I burn a bridge? What if I can't get back? Right? So that was buried in this fear of commitment. So I'm going to share with you after the break uh, what happened in this particular situation. Uh, but as we go into break, of course, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on Inspired Choices Network. And you're listening to Ignite Your Success with Ramshell. And uh, after the break, I'm going to continue my story and I'm going to wrap up and share all of the juicy nuggets in one big, beautiful package for you. Thanks. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchell Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Again, thank you so much for joining me on Inspired Choices Network. <clears throat> and I am Ranchal Van Bryce, and you are in Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. So I promised you uh, that I would share the rest of my story after the break. So before the break, I was telling you, right, that I realized that I was, uh, I was someone who avoided commitment. I had a fear of commitment. Now, I'm going to share with you that fear of commitment was underlying that fear of commitment was fear of failure. Okay. Underlying that fear was this fear of failure. <clears throat> so when I realized that, I decided I was going to commit. And so I um, let go of all of my clients that I had in my business. And I committed to um, my mentor's business. And I told my, my, my coach, right, my boss, what I had done. And we were working on a project. Four days after I let my clients go and we're working on this project, my boss phones me to tell me that they have made some changes in this company and they're letting all of their subcontractors in Canada go. So yes, I made a commitment to this company I've let all my clients go. So I had zero business, right? And I no longer had a job. I got to tell you, I was really, really upset. And I was upset, not with the company, right? Because in this, um, in this digging at this commitment piece, so I talk a lot about my higher power, excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I talk a lot about my higher power. I was guided through divine intelligence. So you can use the word spirit, goddess, God, Allah, Buddha, whatever word works for you. I was guided by my higher power to let go of all of the clients and, and make a commitment. Mm, let me reframe that. I was guided to make a commitment. When I was let go, when the, when the contract ended, again, another way of saying, when I was let go, I remember saying, to my higher power, I was swearing. I was so mad. I fucking did this. And I was like a lot of F-bombs. I can't believe you. I can't believe you did this to me. I can't believe this is happening to me. Remember I talked about the energy of victim, the energy of victorious. I heard so clearly as if this person was in the room. And the God of my understanding has a great sense of humor, by the way. And I heard this voice, dumbass, you were supposed to commit to yourself. <laughs> right? So I share that story with you. <clears throat> Again, I apologize for the coughing. 
I share this story with you because we talked about the blessings of failure, right? And that last blessing of failure was maybe it set you up for something else. This last blessing, this, this experience I had set me up for something else. I let all my clients go and I was like, okay, now what? Great. Now I don't have a business and I don't have this like amazing, you know, paid commission job. Now what am I supposed to do? And I was guided to actually start a networking group called Wine Women in Business here in Red Deer, right? And that led me to the coaching methodology that I have right now. And that led me to an event called the Sharp Woman event. And that led me to a magazine. And that led me here, right? That led me to a podcast first. And then that led me here, right? Where I am right now chatting to you. So I, th- I really feel like when we look at our failures and we can look at it and see, was it a redirection, as I talked about? Was it an opportunity for learning? You know, was it that it set me up for something else? And I think if you look at every single failure that you've experienced, you're going to see one or all four of those blessings in what you deem as a failure. So when we hear this, hear the quote, there's no such thing as a failure. This is really what I believe they're talking about. This is what I believe that we're talking about, that there is no such thing as failure because we have, we have experiences, we have outcomes, right? And, but we can look at these experiences and outcomes and we can go, okay, this was amazing. Can you, can you move into, and so for those of you, again, who have heard me before, you know that I talk a lot about science and spirituality. So we can move into gratitude. So from, I talk about blessings, move into gratitude of thank you so much. I've had this experience and this is what I've learned. I've moved from victim mentality to victorious. I move from this place of things are happening to me to everything happens for me. Right? A long time ago, I heard this word, God is good all the time right? God is good all the time. And so if nothing happens to me and everything's happening for me, including what I would deem a failure, right? Why, why do some of us believe that there's no such thing as failure? I personally, I personally believe that your growth comes every time you fail. Your growth comes every time you fail. You know, when you're, um, when you're lifting weights, right? When you're lifting weights, your growth of your muscle comes actually when, if you're lifting a weight, when you fail, if you're doing a bicep curl and you can't do another bicep curl, that's when your growth of your muscle happens. I think of that every time I think, right, that, I, that I'm failing at something, I'm going, no, you're not failing, Ranchal, you're learning. I have a million ways of knowing not what to do now, <laughs> right? I have a million ways to know what not to do, which, I, so rather than avoiding failure, I can move towards success. I can define what success is and I can move towards success. So I promised you that I was going to wrap this up in a tight little bow for you, right? So here's what we talked about. It's important to reframe both success and failure. What if failure was simply that we took action? We had an expected outcome that didn't happen, right? What would we look at differently? What if you look at the blessings of failure, right? Blessings of failure. What did I learn? Did it redirect you? So I want me to put that in your person. What did you learn, right? Did it redirect you? Do you need to change a belief? Or did this so-called failure set you up for something else, right? That is so very, very important. What are the blessings in your failure, right? The next question to ask yourself, I had shared with you is, what if you didn't need to be right? or you had, uh, didn't not be wrong. Again, I know it's poor English, right? What if you didn't need to be right or not be wrong? These are fantastic questions to ask because we know that clarity changes the brain. We know that your brain is a goal achieving machine. And we know that if you're in confusion, I say we as if there's like somebody here, well, there's always somebody here, divinely guided. We know that if there's confusion, you don't have clarity. If you're in overwhelm, you don't have clarity. And what you really need is a reframe. You need to look at things a little bit differently because when you look at things differently, it changes, right? It's that simply 
that. It is simply that amazing opportunity that you have. So I'm encouraging you to know. Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Thanks. So Ranchelle much. returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you.